Inkedink, 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 Wow! I mean, I gotta. My glasses are on the table here. Come on, Walter, do your 40. Oh, well, I guess uh, she must have put in for vacation this week. So she's only doing a 10 second work week. There's a sign up there. Bill Murray's got it. Well, my glasses. You know, it looks like Glenn Beck's up there too, but. And no, it's Bill Murray. Stephen T. Colbert and L. Well, Drew Carey, but you know, Basil Basil likes it when I call him L. F. 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 Although I certainly, you know, can't say on television during uh, what's still considered the children's hour. But it, it, there's a sign up there, and I know we hand out signs that say. Go Buddha Cat and things like that. How come we don't have a sign that says uh, "Go um, Go Gopher"? Go uh, co-host, interpreter, and chief Gopher. We're gonna be on the air pretty soon, so we you know, we gotta get this. Gotta figure out what this is. I don't know. Yeah, I, I will. Okay. It says. Yeah, it's Murray Holden, Bill Murray Holden, and it says, I'm sick and tired of your damn Scrabble board. And what? Yeah, we got the Scrabble board. Sure. And we got approval. We got approval to have the Scrabble board on the show, on the set. It's approved. We can use it. Got another sign that says, Better check with Snarky. Snarky, we got. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Basil Buddha Cat Presents. My name is David Stevenson, and uh, we're trying to figure out why why the why the big hubbub over the Scrabble board. I mean, you know, we've we Snarky is he scrunched up his nose a little bit. His um, his floppy ears went, whoop, and then, whoop, which, you know, dog and dog they only have. Um, there's only four things. You know, dog only has one sound. Ruff. Well, actually, it's got more than one. I right? shouldn't disparage disparage the dog languages. Ruff, 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 ruff. And those represent four ideas. And apparently there are only are dogs dogs know that simple is better. Don't they don't they Basil? Basil Basil has a language that well, it's Catanese. But um, he never never could figure out uh, the purpose of learning to speak Mandarin. So he, he developed his own language, Catanese. And in Catanese, it's a, it's an ever evolving language. It's up to 897,312 13 14 okay so it's it's a pretty big language and it it represents a, a lot of you know that many words thoughts ideas concepts it's 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 pretty complex but dog you know they um they got it down to a science four things four four the four different sounds that a dog makes and uh, they represent four ideas um what, what's wrong with the Scrabble board? What is what in fact is wrong with it? I mean, you know, it's. I'm gonna get a clarification because Snarky. I'm pretty sure it's Snarky. I'm pretty sure we we talked about this. And Snarky gave the go ahead to. Um, so. So dog. 
as can tell you four things, and, and that's enough. He's, Snarky says that's enough. Um, and Snarky, of course, is our dumb whoop, Stanny uh, Snark Hound. And he's behind the camera, and, and Twitty's up there, you know, checking the sound and making sure that, you know, making sure that as they will, he and Snarky decide it's appropriate. Um, our voices are actually caught, and our voices, well, Basil, Basil gets his point across. So, dog, four things. Um, feed me. Scratch my belly. Take me for a walk. And, oops, I piddled on your carpet. So that's enough. We don't have approval? So you gave you gave Bill Murray that card, that big placard, which says, I'm sick and tired of your damn Scrabble board. But why, you know, you know, we want to use the Scrabble board. We've been using the Scrabble board the whole time we've been on the show, pretty much. And, uh... So, what, what's the big hubbub? I mean, you know, it's um, it's it's appropriate. It's got a hundred hundred um, natural wood colored letters. We've got a backup set of a um, hundred red colored letters. It's got enough um, blanks to um, to fill in the blanks when we don't have enough of something else. Uh, if we've got um, bobble headed baby, then we've got Then we got the extra. We got the extra blank. Um, you know, you know, this is not work. This is fun. You're not getting paid for this. This is not. It's not overtime. This is. Um, you're in the break room now. So, we've been using this thing for all these years, and what in the world is wrong with it? Okay. Snarky can't say it, so Tweety's going to have to. Yeah, Tweety, Tweety's, uh, Tweety's flapping his wings and shaking his head. and uh, Apparently, what did he say? Yeah, Basil said, <laughs> said uh, Basil's in- interpreting for Tweety now. So, um, apparently Tweety's saying that um, Anybody that walks into this room have, has access to the Scrabble board. There's no secrecy to it. It's not safe. It's just not safe. Um, you could very easily, and now he's speaking to um, to us, said you could very easily write down a note on a piece of paper, show the note to somebody, crumple up the note, and swallow it. That would be safe. But the Scrabble board thing is, you know, unless you want to, unless you want to go ahead and uh, start swallowing Scrabble tiles and um, waiting for the results from that to um, to communicate again. I mean, you know, it's it's. Um, but he says, and besides, you can't really, you can't really, you can't really. Um, can't really mix it up. You really can't. Uh, okay, you go play with yourself. Um, you, you can't really code it. You can really can't code and encode the scramble tiles. I mean, you can. I mean, we've we've seen over the years that um, you know, good example being um, when our um, our good friend Marty Heiser. When we were on his show, and it's appropriately named the Marty Heiser Show, and that's on uh, Comcast and uh, Charter and Cablevision and YouTube, and he's out there. So he's you know he's 
been on for been on for about four or five years. He's been on somewhere in between when Progressive Soup went on the air and when uh, Basil Buda Cat presents exclamation point went on the air. So Marty came on and we figured out jointly that if you take the letters in President Barack Hussein Obama, he could come up with all kinds of all kinds of things like um, birth certificate, ha, huh? um, a car bomb goes off, blam. It's like all kinds of all kinds of stuff that um, that you, you would never imagine. So so there you go. So the um, the Scrabble board can encrypt and decrypt messages. Oh, look here. It's got whose name can you find in your new corporate sponsor, Starkist? Hmm. Well, you can't. Well, if you include Starkist, Chunk Light Tuna in water, American Heart Association certified, uh, while many factors affect heart disease, diet slow and saturated fat and cholesterol, they reduce the risk of this disease. It's, um, Charlie's still on the label, but that's not for long because Basil, Basil has plans to um, replace Charlie sent you with tell him Charlie sent you with tell him Basil sent you and uh, not to be avoided uh, Omega 3's and Starkist as Basil aptly points out through his um, interpreter Omega 3's is significantly better than any other brand of tuna all the rest of them only have Omega 2.99 so forget it don't even waste your time Omega-3, that's the one. Star kissed, tell him Charlie sent you, but... Oh, okay, I knew. I see what you're saying. Hidden in all those letters, all those words, you can bring out Ken Starr. Ken Starr. Yeah, I remember who Ken Starr was. Ken Starr went looking for... An independent investigator hired by the Republican National Convention Committee. And he went looking for dirt on uh, Bill Clinton. And lo and behold, after three and a half years of looking in uh, what was called Whitewater, he tried to figure out if um, there was a land deal that uh, the Clintons illegally made some money on. Boy, wouldn't Donald Trump be proud. Um, speaking of which, hold on. Is he back there? Hold on. Basil said, Said, uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, somebody's scratching the back of my head, and I think I know who it is. So, let's see if we can sneak him out of there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. There he is. Sitting at the left hand of the Buddha cat, and uh, Trump will tell you he's he's the Messiah. He's gonna he's gonna lead the United States of America back to greatness. He's gonna bring us back to the way things used to be back when the Constitution was written and the country was founded. And uh, part of that, he says, is um, he gives a, a, a cautionary watch out to the blacks and uh, apparently there were no Mexicans in America back then, at least not the original 13 colonies there were a lot of the blacks but they had it good he said, he said you know they didn't have anything to worry about, they didn't have to worry about working and stuff, all they had to do was hang around in the uh, 
hang around the house and uh, fiddle and play the banjo and uh, sit around the campfire at night and make up beautiful songs. And by the way, he said, those were beautiful songs. I like that rap. So, you want him? You want him behind you? You want him back there? You want him to scratch a little bit more? Of Basil said, put him on his. Um, said, put him on his uh, Trump plane. What's the name of that plane? He has a name for that, doesn't he? Basil said, if you fashioned it, well, I better quote him first. Basil said, said he he fashioned it after Star Kiss Tuna. The way, you know, you have Omega 3s um, and the other tunas have, um, they're limited to Omega 2.9997. Said, uh, Trump's plane is called. Air Force point nine 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 seven, and whatever you do, don't audit my plane, please. Because apparently he's got um, apparently something something slightly less than that, um, and and he doesn't want anybody to know you know what his financial status is, other than the fact he's got billions and billions and billions and billions upon billions of dollars. Um, doesn't want anybody to really know, and that's why he's not releasing his um, his uh, tax his tax returns, his federal tax returns. And uh, okay, okay, he's still flying around the room. Look at that. Hmm. Oh, he flew up to uh, the hammock, and he's up there. Um, he's up there with uh, for the other three chaps. So, so Ken Starr. So Ken Starr was the um, the prosecutor, the ind- independent prosecutor, charged with um, digging up dirt on Bill Clinton. And how did he do? Spent years, and he checked into um, a land deal known as Whitewater. He dug up. Um, dug up the graves of 50 people and uh, he was proud to say one of those one of those folks who he was trying to protect the civil rights of by digging up his grave 47 times was Ron Brown and he kept hearing stories about how somebody kept slipping notes under his door about how the Clintons had murdered a bunch of people uh, including Ron Brown there were about 50 of them all told that the Clintons had, had allegedly murdered for various reasons, um, some for fun, because they just like killing people. And finally, after all those years, didn't quite come up with anything, so America had to settle for a stain on a blue dress. And wow, that was the worst thing that anybody ever did. That was that was apparently the worst thing any human being had ever done was to have sex with a consenting adult. But problem is that the Clinton Bill Clinton had a little problem with not never admitting anything. Whenever he did something wrong, he could have he could have said, "Yeah, you got me." Could have confessed to his wife. Maybe he did. But. It would have been embarrassing to him, to his wife Hillary Clinton, to his family, to the country a little bit. Although I'm sure a lot of a lot of folks in America would have been saying, "You go." If only Marilyn Monroe was still around. So, so, um, so he wouldn't admit anything, and they got him up on a stand, and they got him up on the stand to say. Okay. Basil does it better. Does it better than I do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Man, if you need, if, let me know, guys. If, if I need to uh, to translate what Basil said. 
Basil said, Okay. Said, I did not have sex with that woman. And he didn't have sex with her by his definition. Because um, in a biblical sense, and yeah, yes, yes, kids, a lot of kids believe this too, that the only way you're actually having sex with somebody is if you have intercourse of a vaginal sort. But apparently, if you have oral sex, it's not sex. Hand sex, not sex. Yeah, yeah. Everybody maintains their virginity. It's um. All is, all is well and good. Nothing, nothing is, nothing is uh, going on which needs to be. Is, is. Oh yeah, that's right. See, so he made. He sort of muffled his words when he said, "It all depends what your definition of the word is, is." Because wrapped around the word is. And it's here. I know it's here. Are the letters G in the beginning, in the front, and the letter M at the end? And I think that's probably, probably what he was talking about because um, you know, president's got to be careful what he says. It's important that you know. So Ken Starr, what did you read in the paper about Ken Starr? important that, you know. So Ken Starr, what did you read in the paper about Ken Starr? <laughs> well, Basil said, first of all, old school. So first of all, it's not the paper. It's the internet. And Basil's been on the internet and he found out that Ken Starr based on his marvelous uh, work as chief prosecutor in uh, Whitewater Blue Dress got a job. He's an attorney. He's got, he's got some, some lawyer skills. And I uh, proved that when he, when he danced around for years and years and Got paid for it and uh, made uh, made Joe Lieberman. What, what's Joe Lieberman got to do with this? <sighs> what? What's Joe Lieberman? Because Joe Lieberman was a senator from Connecticut. You know, we you know he was a senator and uh, later on a Fox News contributor because he um, got that gig because his wife uh, Hadassah. Works for uh, for pharma for the big big pharmaceutical conglomerate. Um, their 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 voice their voice in Washington. So well, okay. And he got to be vice the vice vice presidential candidate afterwards. Okay, he has Basil Basil said just <laughs> said shut up and just say what I told you to say. Okay, said um, the um, the um, now I forgot what you said again. What'd you say again? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Said uh, Lieberman. Said this is ridiculous. We're, this this is going on. All this talk about this blue dress and. And a Cuban cigar, and uh, hey, isn't that an impeachable offense uh, to smoke a Cuban cigar? Um, all that, and oh, by the way, could you pass the popcorn? So, so you're, are you saying that Joe Lieberman in, was enjoying enjoying the trials and tribulations of um, of Bill Clinton and the definition of is and the G in front and the M behind and blah 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 and all that? Well, what? Okay, Basil said. Said, 
Bubba Yeah. So, so Ken Starr, what's going on? Well, it's spelled on the Scrabble board, apparently. You know, can we do the Scrabble board one more time? I mean, you know, I understand, you know, that, you know, we asked, we asked permission to use the Scrabble board when we started this whole gig four plus years ago, four and a half years ago now. Snarky said, uh, well, what did he say? Okay, Basil is going to interpret for Snarky. I'm going to interpret for Basil. And hopefully Bill Murray will put that placard away, which said, um, sick and tired of those damn, that damn Scrabble board. Okay, Basil said, Said, uh, and this is quoting Snarky. Just read the story on the Scrabble board, and it'll explain to you. Well, there's two stories up here. Apparently, there's a story about the Scrabble board and about the investigation that Snarky conducted about whether or not he ever approved the use of the Scrabble board. And that's another story about Ken Starr. I'm not sure if we're going to have time. Are we going to have time today? Hmm. Apparently not. we got to get some um, shots of the kids in. So, uh, Basil Budacat presents, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, we'll see you Sunday morning. The show quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. We, He's got we, a lot to say. We have a lot of conversations <laughs> with him. Uh, I'm sure that's highly productive. But we can't do it on the big phone or the little phone. We have to do it on the on the micro inky dinky phone, which you could on the table here somewhere. Why is that? Because we, according to the importance of the guest, we have the uh, the, the cat and hat phone or the Nickelodeon phone or my cell phone. So the inky dinky dinky phone. Or the uh, like speck of dust micro inky dinky ball. Looks like he has a sunburst. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Inky dink. 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 Okay, that'll do it. Wait, we don't get to sing our wonderful chorus on Wall Street with the rest. Oh, you want to sing that too? Okay. okay. We could just sing the chorus. Okay, okay, which is on Wall Street. Which is, of course, the song, the song is on Broadway. It's the original song. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. So you guys are just going to do the on Wall Street. Okay, let me start it off. All right. They say they'd rob your grandma blind. They said they'd rob you on Wall Street. On Wall Street. Fritter her er, away her Medicare. On Wall, on Wall Street. Street. On Wall Street. And Pharma Oil and their pet fox. Don't care if she lives in a box. On Wall Street. <laughs> So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away, her Medicare on Wall Street. And Pharma Oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Meow.